Welcome to the Parables of Jesus with Dr. Peter McLuhan. Our parable today is the Great Banquet. On three occasions, Jesus was invited to have dinner with the Pharisee. Whoever brought the news about the invitation must have stirred up a lot of excitement amongst Jesus' disciples. It so happened that the dinner was a meal that was to be served on the Sabbath. Usually this means that the meal was prepared before sunset on Friday and then eaten after sunset. So picture with me an evening meal with a number of prominent lawyers, Pharisees, and other non-invited guests observing the meal from the courtyard of the home. Luke wrote, one Sabbath, when he went to dine at the house of a ruler of the Pharisees, they were watching him carefully. Luke chapter 14, verse 1. Luke tells us that the host was a ruler of the Pharisees. Most likely, this meant he was an official of a local synagogue. Further, we should note that Jesus was being watched. It seems that the purpose of the meal was not so much to enjoy the presence of Jesus as much as it was to try to catch him breaking their law in order that they could bring charges against him. With that in mind, Luke tells us that amongst the guests, and just then in front of him, there was a man who had dropsy, Luke chapter 14 and verse 2. Now, dropsy is an old English word for people who have excessive water in their body that they can't get rid of. Today, the disease is called edema. Now, the most obvious symptoms is a person having a swollen abdomen or arms or legs. The disease is frequently associated with kidney, liver, or heart failure. And Jesus could not have missed seeing the physical need of the man. And after seeing the man, Jesus turned to the expert lawyers and Pharisees and asked this question, is it lawful to heal on the Sabbath or not? Luke chapter 14 and verse 3. It is obvious that Jesus had read the minds of the lawyers and Pharisees who were watching him. Luke says that none of them dared to answer Jesus' question. And in contrast to the stern faces of the lawyers and the Pharisees, the expression on the sick man's face was priceless. The question Jesus asked raised hope in the man that he was about to be healed. He was beaming from ear to ear, indicating that he didn't see anything wrong with God healing him on the Sabbath. And that was enough faith for Jesus to be moved with compassion for the man. Luke reported, when they refused to answer, Jesus touched the sick man and healed him and sent him away. Luke chapter 14 and verse 4. I release that same miracle of healing to somebody watching this message who's suffering from water retention. If you have swelling in any part of your body, I command your swelling to go right now by the same power that healed the man in this story. Swelling, go right now in Jesus' name. Now, as soon as the man was healed, Jesus invited him to leave and to go show his family what God had done for him. Jesus knew that the religious leaders would not be happy, and Jesus did not want the man's joy to be taken away by anything that they might say. It was highly likely they had invited the man in the first place to come to the party, not because they cared about him, but rather to see what Jesus would do. And they were not prepared for the question that Jesus was about to ask them. And so which of you, having a son or an ox that has fallen into a well on the Sabbath day, will not immediately pull him out. Luke chapter 15, chapter 14, and verse 5. Jesus knew that the leaders invented exceptions for every rule that they made. That is how religions are. The leaders make exemptions for most of their rules. They would certainly have pulled their own son or their own animal out of a ditch on the Sabbath while criticizing others for doing the same thing. Luke reported, they could not reply to the question 
Jesus had just asked them. And so Jesus continues speaking by saying, he told a parable to those who were invited. When he noticed how they chose the places of honor, saying to them, when you are invited by someone to a wedding feast, do not sit down in the place of honor, lest someone more distinguished than you be invited by him. Luke chapter 14 and verse 8. One time a well-known politician gave me an invitation to attend our national presidential prayer breakfast. When I arrived at the breakfast, I noticed that my ticket did not have a table assigned to it. I was asked to wait outside the hall while the meal began to be served. And after a while, I was ushered into the main hall to take a seat of the person who failed to show up for the special occasion. It turns out, Someone who knew I had received a last-minute ticket wanted me to be seated in the main hall where the president was about to speak. While I was happy to be in the event no matter where I was seated, God had other plans for me. Then I understood why Jesus said, When you invited, go and sit in the lowest place, so that when your host comes and he may say to you, Friend, move up higher, then you will be honored in the presence of all, who sit at the table with you, Luke chapter 14 and verse 10. The Bible clearly teaches everyone who exalts himself will be humbled, and he who humbles himself will be exalted, Luke chapter 14, verse 11. God loves to lift up humble people. Serve humbly wherever God has placed you, and he will lift you up in his own time and in his own way. Jesus is now ready to address the Pharisee who invited him into his house for dinner. We can be sure the man in this parable is the ruling Pharisee. We read that Jesus said, When you give a dinner or a banquet, do not invite your friends or your brothers or your relatives or rich neighbors, lest they also invite you in return and you be repaid. But when you give a feast, invite the poor, the crippled, the lame, the blind, and you will be blessed because they cannot repay you. Luke chapter 14, verse 12 through 14. Now, sometimes when we have a party at our church, someone will come to me and say, Pastor, you're needed at the door. I usually know exactly what that means. Someone wants to come in who's different than most of us. And when I go to the door... I usually find a homeless person or someone who is on drugs or alcohol or in a desperate situation. And I'll do my best to share food from our party and pray with that person if he or she will allow me to do so. And Jesus often brings people across our paths we need to help. And they're hungry to experience a touch of the Father's love. After this statement, Luke said, when one of those who had reclined at the table heard these things, he said, Blessed is everyone who will eat bread in the kingdom of God. Luke chapter 14 and verse 15. Notice that the man is talking about the kingdom of God as though it is something in the future. Jesus came to show us that the kingdom of God is as much in the present as it is in the future. Jesus was present manifesting the kingdom of God and showing his power. And so Jesus shared one final story with the Pharisee's house before the party came to an end. He said, a, a man once gave a great banquet and invited many. And at the time of the banquet, he sent his servants to say to those who had been invited, come, come now for everything is ready. Luke chapter 14, verse 15 through 17. Please note, the banquet is ready right now. Jesus is ready and present at this very moment to bring your party to life. It doesn't need to be boring because Jesus is there. He is not inviting us to enjoy something after we die. He wants us to enjoy his presence and his power right now. And Jesus said, they all began to like to make excuses. One said he'd bought a field, another said he'd bought oxen, a third said he had just gotten married. They were all lame excuses. 
Just like the excuses people give today for not wanting to learn how to move in the presence and power of Holy Spirit. When the servant reported all these things to the master, Jesus said, the master of that house became angry and said to his servants, go out quickly to the streets and to the lanes of the city and bring in the poor, the crippled, the lame, and the blind. Luke chapter 14, verse 21. These are exactly the people, religious people, try to avoid. And Jesus invited them all to come into the kingdom and experience the healing presence and power of the Holy Spirit. If you're poor, I open your eyes to see the provision that the Lord has for you. If you're crippled or lame, I command your weak knees and legs and feet to be healed by the power of Jesus. Get up right now and walk. If you're blind or deaf, I command your eyes or ears to open and your ears to hear in the name of Jesus. The servant reported to the master, Sir, what you commanded has been done, and there is still room for more. Luke chapter 14 and verse 22. Then the master said to the servant, Go out into the highways and the hedges and compel people to come in that my house may be filled. Luke chapter 14, verse 23. The good news is that Jesus is for everyone. Today, a compelling invitation is being extended to you to come into the banquet of the master. When I travel in the Arab world, some people will come and say to me, Jesus is for the Jew and Muhammad is for everyone else. When I travel in Africa, some people come and say to me, Muhammad is for the black man while Jesus is for the white man. I invite you today, if you've not tasted how good Jesus is, I invite you to the banquet he has prepared for everyone right now, regardless of who you are and what background you come from. It is possible to hear his voice and to experience his love. You feel his power flowing through your life, freeing you from sin and releasing his power to heal others. It is as simple as recognizing that God sent Jesus to earth to pay for your sin. Accept what he did for you on the cross. Ask him to forgive your sins and make you his child. Invite Holy Spirit to fill you with his presence right now. Holy Spirit, come upon those who are listening to this message. Receive your healing and receive the gift of eternal life. If you were just healed or accepted Jesus as your Savior as you listen to this message, write to me and tell me what God has done for you. Next week, we'll continue learning from the parables of Jesus. We hope this message has filled you with living hope in Jesus. If you would like to talk with someone about your spiritual journey, please leave a comment or send us a private message. We enjoy reading your notes and having an opportunity to pray with you. If you received a blessing through this message, please share it with others. We invite you to become a Living Hope Partner by donating as little as $1 a month through our QR code. Your gifts will help us create new messages and reach more people. Living Hope is a ministry of Ingleside International Incorporated. All donations to Living Hope qualify as a charitable contribution. Thank you for your prayers and support. Next week, we will continue learning together from the Word of God. God bless you and fill you with living hope.